Hello everybody and welcome back to this day in history, our nightly look back at a specific day in history, where we take a look back at a specific day in history, examine the events of this of that day, the historical context in which the events took place, and the historical ramifications of the events. We also take a look at some people that were born on that day, and some people that died on that day. As always, please, if you have not yet, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification icon to be alerted anytime I post new content, and tell a friend. And without any further ado, this day in history, March the 7th. And on this day, in 1965, the Bloody Sunday occurred. Bloody Sunday was a march that was a planned to go from Selma, Alabama, to the state capitol in Montgomery to talk to George Wallace directly about the death of a local man. And what happened is the local sheriff called out a posse and ordered all men in Dallas County under over the age of 21 to come to the courthouse that morning to be deputized. The march was uneventful until they got to the Edmund Pettus Bridge, at which point they were met by law enforcement and the posse, and they were savagely and violently beaten by that posse. These images were broadcast worldwide and horrified the nation and the world. And it led to a strong groundswell of support for the marchers. Um, President Johnson issued an immediate statement deploring the brutality with which a number of, I'm going to use a new term, not use the term he used, African American citizens of Alabama were treated. He also promised to send a voting rights bill to Congress that week, although it took him a little longer. And he also... Um, would eventually allow federal troops to be used to allow for the peaceful march to take place. If you have never seen the confrontation on the bridge, please go out of your way to look it up. It is some of the most horrifying images you will ever see. And a true American hero by the name of John Lewis is the man who led the march and had he he was beaten on that bridge. And John Lewis is now a member of Congress, a well respected man who is fighting cancer, and we should at the time of the recording of this video. And I will say this. Cancer doesn't know what it's met. Because John Lewis is tough as nails. And one amazing event that came out of this march. Once African Americans were given the franchise in Dallas County, Alabama through the Voting Rights Act of 1965. They voted out the racist sheriff. And that is a true, in my opinion, testament to American democracy. That these citizens, African American citizens of Dallas County who had been oppressed brutalized and tormented by this man 
ended his career through the peaceful democratic process of him facing the voters. And they said, no, sir, you're gone. Some births that occurred on this day. In 1956 in Hollywood, California, Brian Cranston was born. Cranston um, is, of course, a famous actor who appeared in many sitcoms. But most people are going to remember him for either his role in Malcolm in the Middle or a much darker character. And that much darker character is Walter White. In my opinion, Breaking Bad is one of the best television shows to come on television in the 21st century. It's in the top five. It's amazing. The character arc that Walter White takes from mild-mannered chemistry teacher to drug lord who is ruthless tyrannical and a force to be reckoned with is amazing. It's simply great television. And the one of the most chilling scenes is where his wife confronts him and is talking about how she fears that one day someone may come to their house and knock to kill him and his family. And he calmly tells his wife that that won't occur because he is the one that knocks. Favorite, favorite scene in this show. Deaths that occurred on this day. In 1986, at the age of 81, Jacob Javits passed away. Uh, Javits was a uh, politician and public servant from the state of New York. He served at both the state and federal level, uh, representing New York in the House of Representatives, later serving as the state's attorney general, and then serving the state in the United States Senate. Uh, Javits was a Republican. Um, he became a Republican in his young adulthood, after witnessing the corruption of the Tamati Hall organization, uh, which caused him to swear off the Democratic Party in New York City uh, forever. Um, he was a liberal Republican, though, uh, that supported many elements of LBJ's Great Society and Civil Rights Legislation. Uh, Javits would initially support the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, but over time come to question Johnson's handling of the war. In 1981, he would lose the Republican nomination in a primary to Al D'Amato, who challenged him from his right. He would win the Liberal Party's nomination, uh, but losing the general election uh, to Elizabeth Holtzman and Al D'Amato, who would succeed him in the United States Senate. Um, he would die in 1986, as I said, in West Palm Beach, Florida. One interesting thing about Javits after his death is the Javits Center, a huge convention center in New York City, was named after him. And it's really famous for its glass ceiling. It has this beautiful glass ceiling. And it was to be the site of Hillary Clinton's election night party. And it was to symbolize her breaking that glass ceiling and there's some reports that maybe they had planned fireworks along the Hudson. 
Um, of course, um, Clinton didn't win that election. Uh, she lost to Donald Trump. Uh, but I think it's interesting that Hillary Clinton's victory party was going to be at a center, a center named for a liberal Republican. And it's just kind of interesting. Also, Hillary Clinton didn't serve in the same seat as Al D'Amato. Don't any I don't want to get that in anyone's head. Um, Al D'Amato would serve in the U.S. Senate till 1999 when he was replaced by Charles Schumer. Hillary's seat was previously held by Daniel Patrick Moynihan. So, I hope everybody has a good night. I'll see you all tomorrow.